Hello my friends, welcome to my energy economist channel. We're gonna start today by knowing the seismic survey and finding oil and gas. So stay with me. This technique uses a sonic instrument over a desired site to correctly locate the prospective basin structure. In this method, a sound signal generated by the explosion method is transmitted through the Earth's surface. Under study and reflected signals are detected by geophones located at specific positions. The frequency and time of the reflected signal varies with the density, porosity, and the type of reflecting surface. Various rock deposits at different depths vary with density and porosity. Seismic reflection can measure this change as it travels below the surface. Computer simulation software is used for imaging the subsurface structure. This is applied to all the surface for fast and accurate prediction about the oil and gas reserve location. Well, before a site is finally selected for drilling operations, it's to be noted that exploration has to be deterministic, but the availability of oil and gas is estimated based on probability. Seismic methods are based on determinations of the time interval that elapses between the initiation of a sound wave from detonation of a dynamic charge or other artificial shock and the arrival of the vibration impulses at a series of seismic detectors geophones. The arrivals are amplified and recorded along with time marks 0.01 second intervals to give the seismogram. The method depends upon whether 1. The velocity within each of the layers penetrated at depths is greater than that in the layers above. Two, the layers are bounded by plain surfaces and 3. Material within each layer is essentially homogeneous. The seismograph measures the shock waves from the explosions initiated by triggering small controlled charges of explosives at the bottom of shallow holes in the ground. The formation depth is determined by the time elapsed between the explosion and detection of the reflected wave at the surface. The depths and the media reached by seismic waves depend on the distance between shot point and receiving points. The first impulses or breaks in a seismogram are caused by waves that have traveled quickly between the shot point and any receiving point. At short distances, this is usually also the shortest path. But beyond a certain distance, it's quicker for a reflected pulse to travel via a longer path involving underlying layers with a higher velocity. From a plot of travel time as a function of surface distance, data are obtained for determining both the velocity of the material and number of layers present. From the distances at which changes the velocity and indicated the depth of each layer can be computed. In general, the deeper, older formations as a result of higher compression have a higher density and also a higher seismic velocity than the overlying material. Observed differences in velocity not only define the direction of slope of the rock surfaces, but also provide information for computing the degree of slope present. For what might be termed normal conditions, increase in velocity with depths. The error determined in depths is usually less than 10% with this method. Seismic geophysical work is also carried out on the water, greatly aiding the search for oil on the continental shelves and other areas covered by water. A marine seismic project moves continually with detectors towed behind the boat 
at a constant speed and fairly constant dips. Explosive charges are detonated at a position and time determined by the speed of the boat, so that a continuous survey of the reflecting horizons can be obtained. Advances in seismic survey techniques and the development of more sophisticated seismic processing algorithms over the last few decades have changed the way fields are developed and managed from being a predominantly exploration methods tool seismic surveying has progressed to become one of the most cost effective methods for optimizing field production in many cases seismic data have allowed operators to extend the life of mature fields by many years seismic surveys involve generating sound waves which propagate through the earth's rocks down the reservoir targets. The waves are reflected to the surface, where they are registered in receivers, recorded and stored for processing. The resulting data make up an acoustic image of the subsurface which is interpreted by geophysicists and geologists. Seismic surveying is used in Exploration for delineation structure and stratigraphic traps Production for reservoir surveillance such as observing the movement of reservoir fluids in response to production Seismic acquisition techniques vary depending on the environment, onshore or offshore, and the purpose of the survey In an exploration area, a seismic survey may consist of a loose grid of 2D lines in contrast, in an area undergoing appraisal, a 3D seismic survey will be shot. In some mature fields, a permanent 3D acquisition network might be installed on the seed for regular 6 to 12 months reservoir surveillance called Ocean Bottom Stations OPS, or Ocean Bottom Cables OPC, up to the First World War. All geological knowledge was in fact exclusively based on surface indicators providing a vague clue as to the location of underground reservoirs throughout the OCA the most reliable signal for the oil prospector was the localization of natural eruptions like oil seepages or springs natural gas springs outcrops of sands impregnated with petroleum or bitumen bituminous dikes and bituminous lakes. These eruptions were the first feature to look for as they demonstrated that at least some oil existed in the vicinity and was able to migrate to the surface. Other sedimentary formations such as sands, sandstones, shells and limestones were also potential so less certain clues. For field working American geologists this hint was nonetheless of limited relevance since the few unveiled seepages quickly got drilled by wild cutters. On the contrary, seepage search did prove very productive in countries such as Mexico and Azerbaijan, where oil and gas leaked copiously from source rocks. So, abundant was this type of primary surface indicators that the methodology for the second comprehensive Mexican oil survey relied chiefly on inventoring seepages scattered all over the country and complemented by a geological description of the underlying sedimentary rock structure. If you want to learn more about the seismic survey in finding oil and gas, you could do so in my book Economic Study of Oil and Gas Exploration, which is published on Amazon. Check it out as a link in the description. Please take a second to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to also hit the notification bell. Thank you for watching and goodbye.